Hey guys, welcome to the Late Mind Show. I'm Steph and today I want to show you a way to transfer power wirelessly thanks to the cyclic mode. It's called the Energy Transfer Node and it is the red thing that I'm holding in my hand. It makes things so much easier, I think you're gonna love it too. Let's get to it. As usual, you open up your crafting terminal or crafting table. Two are the main things that we need to craft and get started. The first one is the energy transfer node. So when you type in energy node, it should be the first thing that pops up and you click on it. The recipe requires four iron bars, two redstone comparators, two nether bricks and one block of redstone. Now when I click on the plus, my crafting system extracts those items automatically to the crafting terminal so I have them and I'll just take it directly from here. But if you don't know how to craft and use the JEI in Minecraft, please check out my tutorial on that subject. I will post the link on that video. So the energy transfer node is ready. Now the second thing that we need is a GPS marker. You type in GPS and it should pop up here. This is the picture of the GPS marker. You click on it. I'll click the plus to show me the recipe. And these are the items that you need. The recipe requires light blue dye, a piece of paper and stick. This is pretty straightforward, so I'll just take the GPS marker. So now we have the two main things that we need to set up our wireless transmission of energy. Now that we have the energy transfer node in hand, what is the next step? In order for you to send energy wirelessly to another machine, the energy transfer node needs to receive energy from a power system that you have. This is one of the power systems that I have. This is a small one, but it's a great example. So I just go next to my power system and I point to the power cable of that system. And then I just right click on it and the energy transfer node connects automatically to that power cable. This means that the energy transfer node receives energy. I want to show you what it looks like if we decide to connect it to another power system. So this is another power system that I have. It's different. These are generators that produce power with coal and the cables are behind it, which are also different than the ones I showed you before. The process is the same. I just point to the energy cable and I right click while the energy transfer node is in my main hand. And now the energy transfer node is connected to that power system. Now back to our first example. What do you do after you've connected the energy transfer node to a power system? You right click on the energy transfer node and a GUI opens up for you. It contains some of the settings that are important for us. The first thing here is whether the energy transfer node is always on or requires redstone. You should leave that like that always on, don't change it. This preview is something I'm gonna show you a bit later. Next thing is the transfer rate. Here the transfer rate is set to some minimum in the beginning so you can change that by dragging that bar to the end and now you have the maximum transfer rate possible which is 16,000. The most important thing however are these boxes here. As you can see they have the exact same picture as the GPS marker but with different opacity. As you guessed yes this is where the GPS marker go. If you click on that question mark it says detect target block. If I click it here it says bind a location to a GPS marker. This means that this GPS marker needs to be binded to a machine that will receive power from the energy transfer node. And this is where the magic begins. Like I showed you, I would like to connect this harvester here to my power system. I would like this harvester to receive energy. And this is the moment of how we do it with the energy transfer node. You go next to the machine that you would like to receive energy wirelessly. You point with the GPS marker towards the machine and you shift right click on it and it says saved. What the GPS marker does is it saves the coordinates of that particular machine in itself. When you open up your inventory and you hover over the GPS marker, you would see some coordinates that are saved. And this is the exact location of that block here. This is how the GPS marker saves the location. What we do now is go back to the energy transfer node. We right click on it and then we place the GPS marker in that box here and it even drained our energy. <laughs> this is what happens when you start sending energy to a particular place. Now when I click on the question mark here, it shows harvester. This is how we know that this GPS marker is connected to the harvester and this harvester now has power in it. 
how do we know? Well, first the harvester already started uh, harvesting the plants. <laughs> But here this bar is also red and it's full. It's receiving 64,000 RF from 64,000 maximum. There is one more thing left to show you when you open up the GUI, the settings menu, and you click on preview hidden. This shows you a laser that connects a GPS from that energy transfer node to a particular machine that you connected to it. So this is pretty cool. I already have some GPS markers set to this energy transfer node. If I click on preview hidden, it will show you <laughs> the machines that I've connected. Some of them are way over there. Some of them are underground. The other one is there. So this is the main way to use an energy transfer node. It makes your life way easier. I hope you enjoyed the video and decided to try this out in your own Minecraft world. Let me know if you did. By the way, I'm playing MC Eternal Mod Pack if you're wondering, because it contains more than 300 mods that are just waiting to be discovered and I'm really excited to do it with you. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't and click that like button below. This is all the support I need and appreciate. Thank you for watching, see you soon!